<laughs> beekeeper's shirt on today. My name is Bill Hensky and I am a beekeeper and a teacher from St. Louis, Missouri. And I'm down here on Ross Island in McMurdo Sound in Antarctica in the little, what we call the town. This is McMurdo Station. I gotta zip up and put my gloves on before I tell you any more about beekeeping down here in Antarctica. So right now it's about 18 degrees Fahrenheit and the wind's pretty good. It's about 30 miles per hour. And this is a cool summer day here in Antarctica in the McMurdo Station area. The, right across the sound there are called the Antarctic Dry Valleys. And that is the majority of all the exposed land of Antarctica where you might find terrestrial animals living. Uh, most of the animals you associate with Antarctica are seals and penguins, um, but they don't live on most of Antarctica. Most of Antarctica is a big sheet of ice, about one to two miles. Yeah, bees would definitely not like this wind, and they definitely wouldn't like this temperature. Bees don't get out and fly much below 55 degrees Fahrenheit, and it never gets above 55 degrees Fahrenheit here. Uh, the warmest on record is in the, I don't know really now. Bees have some other problems here. Uh, one of them is that there is very little liquid water and, and bees rely on liquid water to control the temperature of their hive. Well, the hive's gonna be cold one way or the other. It's not gonna need too much regulation. It's not really an energy source for bees. So to make baby bees, you need protein. And to get protein, you need pollen. And to get pollen, you need angiosperms. Or, I don't know, maybe they could take fungal spores. I don't know. But there's definitely not a lot of food sources in this environment out here. Uh, it's just mostly bare rock. There's a... Yeah, so right here, there's a drainage ditch. And right here you can see some green. Those are algal mats and, and bryophytes. And those are the largest plants that we have here in continental Antarctica. There are some places on the Antarctic Peninsula and Western Antarctica that do have some grasses, which are flowering plants. But of course, they're pollinated by the wind, not by any pollinators. I suppose, I suppose they could eat uh, sugar out of our garbage cans uh, from the leftovers at the bottom of everyone's juice glass. I don't know. It doesn't sound like a very good life. <laughs> they might like the 24 hours of sunlight that we have several months a year, but that's counteracted by the many months of complete darkness uh, for the rest of the year. And that darkness is also with negative 40 degree average temperatures in most places in Antarctica. Uh, they're not going to have, definitely not have stored up enough energy to survive those extremes. There's no places for bees to actually build their hives. Uh, Honeybees have to build in a cavity, and there are no natural cavities here. There's no logs, there's no trees, there's uh, not any dirt that's actually going to hold up because there's so little organic material. If you dig into the dirt, it just kind of falls away like sand. Um, so yeah, that would be it would be pretty tough to figure out a place to actually put your hive. All the buildings here, uh, maybe they could build in a building like they do sometimes. Well, they're all completely full of insulation. There are no void spaces in any of the buildings here. Most of Antarctica is covered by a one to two mile thick sheet of ice, so there's not going to be any bees working there. Uh, this is what the dry valley soils look like in most places. They have different kinds of rocks and different kinds of soils, but for the most part, there's very little organic matter even. So the few animals that we do find are nematodes. Uh, we find rotifers in the soil and my favorite animal, the tardigrade, uh, but definitely no insects.